Hello and welcome back to 365 Days with MXM Tune. I'm Maya, a singer, songwriter, video maker, Oakland native, and cinephile. I'm also a big fan of history. I love untold stories, gross facts, hidden secrets, and anything weird, dark, and funky from the past. Each day, I'm going to share a few of my favorite deep cuts with you. So let's take a look at today's stories, with a spoiler warning for the details of the film To Kill a Mockingbird, and a trigger warning for violence and sexual assault that is discussed within the movie. It's 365 with MXM Tune. New facts every day, so don't leave too soon. I'm gonna teach you stuff, no, it won't be tough. Gonna go a year till you've had enough. It's 365. Today, in 1962, To Kill a Mockingbird, the film adaptation of the timeless novel by Harper Lee was released in theaters. The movie was directed by Robert Mulligan and starred Gregory Peck, who later received the Best Actor Oscar for the role at the Academy Awards. The screenplay was adapted from Lee's 1960 novel by a man named Horton Foote. The original book of To Kill a Mockingbird had just won the Pulitzer Prize. Gregory Peck played the lawful good lawyer, Atticus Finch, and Mary Badham played the young heroine of Scout. The film marked the debut for actors Robert Duvall, William Wyndham, and Alice Ghostly. A grown-up version of Scout narrates the movie. It begins with young Scout and her brother Jem growing up in the fictional town of Maycomb, Alabama. Their father, Atticus Finch, is a widow and a local lawyer. Jem, Scout, and their friend Dill spend the time playing outside and searching for a town recluse named Boo Radley. The children are especially fascinated with a tree on the Radley property that Jem has found hidden objects inside, like a broken pocket watch and a pocket knife. He even finds two soap dolls that seem to resemble him and his sister. Their father Atticus is both a great father and an exemplary role model, which he exhibits by offering legal help to the poor of Maycomb. Because of their father's profession, Scout and Jem know more about racism and inequality in the town than normal kids of their age. As the novel goes on, Atticus is called upon to defend a black man, Tom Robinson, accused of raping a white girl, Mayella Ewell. Jem and Scout are bullied by the other children in town for their father's acceptance of the divisive case. On the night before the trial, Atticus stands guard outside Robinson's holding cell. It's a good thing because a lynch mob comes to try and hurt Robinson. Scout, Jem, and Dill happen to be exploring in the area and get in the middle of the hateful conflict. Scout recognizes one of her classmates' fathers and says hello, at which the mob becomes embarrassed and runs away. At the trial, the prosecution claims that Tom Robinson went into the Ewell house to help Mayella disassemble a wardrobe at her request and that around the same time, Mayella appeared with bruises. Atticus argues for the defense that since Tom's left arm is disabled, it would have been difficult, if not impossible, for him to beat Mayella up in the spots that she showed injuries before raping her. Atticus then mentions that Mayella's father is left-handed, and implies that Mayella's father beat her after he found her seducing a black man. Atticus cites additional evidence that Mayella was never examined by a doctor after the incident. When Tom gets on the stand, he says that he did not assault Mayella, but she did kiss him against his will. Atticus then asks the jury, composed only of white men, to steer away from prejudice and focus on the facts, which point to Tom's innocence. Alas, he is found guilty. Later that day, the sheriff informs Atticus that Tom was killed while being transferred to the prison, supposedly because he was trying to escape. Atticus goes to Tom's parents' house to tell them about the tragedy, and on the way he runs into Bob Ewell, Mayella's father, who spits in his face. Scout and Jem then spend the evening acting in a school play. Scout plays a ham. She can't find her clothes afterwards, so she has to walk home with Jem in the ham costume. The siblings are then attacked while taking a shortcut home through the woods, and Scout is miraculously protected by the ham costume. Jem falls to the ground, but then the attacker is stabbed by an unknown fourth person in the woods and dies. The person who stabbed the attacker carries Jem to their house, and Scout runs behind. Scout tells the sheriff and her father what happened, and sees that the man who saved Jem is standing off to the side. Atticus introduces her to Arthur Radley, a.k.a. Boo Radley. Boo saved Jem and Scout from Mr. Ewell, who was the person who tried to attack them. Ewell is dead. The sheriff realizes that Boo killed Ewell, but he decides to write in his report that Ewell fell on his own knife. He doesn't want to draw attention to Boo, who is pathologically shy and reclusive. As Scout walks Boo home, the effort of the sheriff helps her to draw the film's conclusion, from which it takes its name 
that drawing unwanted attention to someone like Boo is like killing a mockingbird for their singing voice. The movie and the book are both known worldwide as a classic parable of the loss of innocence. The producers wanted to set the film in Monroeville, Alabama, where Harper Lee was from and where it inspired much of the novel. But the town has changed a lot in the intervening 40 years, so they decided to shoot it on a set in Hollywood instead. The film ended up earning more than 10 times what was spent to make it. It was nominated for eight Academy Awards and won three of them. Walt Disney requested the film to be screened privately in his house and at its conclusion said, that's the kind of film I wish I could make. The legacy of To Kill a Mockingbird lives on. In 1995, the movie was listed in the National Film Registry, and in 2003, the AFI named Atticus Finch the greatest movie hero of the 20th century. Today, in 1994, Green Day played Madison Square Garden in New York City. I know what you're thinking. So a band played a concert at MSG. Big deal, right? Well, it was a big deal for Green Day, because they had begun the year just playing small clubs. From small clubs in January to MSG at Christmas is a pretty good year for a band. It was also a big deal for fans of the lead singer, Billy Joe Armstrong, as well. He performed wearing only his guitar and socks. You can't forget the socks. And now for our final segment of the day, I'm going to be sharing what I did in a Christmas in my life. On December 25th, 2017, three Christmases ago, I was in Florida with my grandparents celebrating the holidays, and I was gifted one of my favorite instruments that I've ever played, my baritone ukulele. Um, My grandfather and my grandmother gave it to me, and I still use it to this day. I don't think I'll ever get rid of it. It's literally my favorite instrument that I've ever played. I don't know what it is. The sound of it is just like Baritone ukuleles sound the best, I think, out of all the different ukuleles. And it's even more special because my grandparents gave it to me. Um, That was before I graduated high school and I was trying to figure out what I wanted my next steps to be. And I just remember my grandfather being so excited for me to do any decision that I decided that I wanted to do between architecture school or focusing on music. And he was always so supportive of my music career. And so I will hold that instrument very near and dear to my heart forever. Thank you so much for listening. I'm wishing all of you who celebrate a very Merry Christmas. This year has been more crazy than anything I think any of us could have ever imagined. So if anything, I hope you take a little bit of your day to day to think about something that you're grateful for, about something that was small and brought you joy, despite the darkness throughout all of this year. Thank you for listening. I'll see you tomorrow. Remember to subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts and follow along at 365 Days on your preferred social media platforms. It's 365 with MXM2. New facts every day, so don't leave too soon. I'm gonna teach you stuff. No, it won't be tough. Gonna go a year till you've had enough. It's 